so cold. <laughs> do you think we can do this whole intro like this? Hello, I'm DIY Danny. <laughs> Hello, DIY friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and today's DIY in progress is another episode of Can I Make It For Cheaper? A series where I take your suggested highly priced decor items and find a DIY solution to dupe it in a high quality way and hopefully for one third of the price. At the end, we will do a summary of the cost to really evaluate if I can, in fact, make it for cheaper. So maybe I can, maybe I can't, but that is what this series is meant to find out. Mostly like, is it worth it? <laughs> maybe that's the new title of the series. Is it worth it? <laughs> Very comedically humorous, Jim. We are venturing into the world of hefty coffee table builds and I gotta say, I'm pretty excited to find out if this piece could be done in an affordable way. I'm feeling optimistic, but you just never know. Is the DIY route the best way to go? But before we get into it, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, welcome! Feel free to hit that subscribe button and join this amazing Creative Beast community. I share a lot of fun DIY home projects and sometimes we get a bit weird, but we like weird here, so with that said, Let's get into it. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. All right, West Elm, you're on the DIY chopping block this week. Requested by Aaron for this Can I Make It For Cheaper episode, I am focusing on the super modern, super trendy Monty Lava Stone coffee table, currently valued at 899 buckaroos. How do I turn this off? How do I do this? Sounds. None. All right, so let's take a look at this coffee table. My goodness, I mean, look at this. This piece is absolutely beautiful. As you guys know, I love a good organic modern moment in <laughs> design and decor. All right, let's look at some of the details here. Why we're gonna love it. It resembles the look and feel of aged stone. Lovely. It is suitable for both indoor and outdoor use. Oh, that's actually interesting. Not often do you get a coffee table that you can actually have indoor and outdoor, so that's an interesting fact. So it's made with lava stone, volcanic ash, fiberglass, sand, and stone to create an earthy texture on this beautiful lightweight piece. I mean, damn. Ooh, I love this close-up photo. You know what? I love how porous it looks. Like it, that lava stone is just like beautiful. I do love that it's handcrafted in the Philippines. There's obviously artisans and communities that it's helping. And then let's see, what's the weight on this? 60 pounds. I can see why this table is pretty much a thousand dollars when you get like taxes and delivery costs included. It's well crafted, it's well made with lava stone, which sounds super fancy. I think based on some research that I had done previously, it's somewhere between 15 to 30 dollars per square meter. And I assume that's for like maybe like a one and a half inch slab and this thing is thick, 60 pounds thick. <laughs> Extra thick! But lava stone is cool. I mean, I kind of like the conversation around lava stone because lava stone is supposed to have these kind of spiritual effects on the human mind. It's said to cleanse negative thoughts and emotions. It stimulates creativity, it alleviates anxiety. So it's kind of got a great story behind it, but you just can't beat artisan pieces like this. And I'll always say, if you can afford to buy it, buy it because it's supporting artisans and that's important. But I have been tasked to figure out if I could build something like this for cheaper for those who can't afford a thousand dollars on a coffee table and that's okay too. One thing I do like to note within this series is that I don't factor in the cost of tools or my time because first of all if I didn't have some of the more like primary tools I don't know if I would actually tackle this and second my time and labor is built from passion and love of the process but I will note how many days it took me so that if you want to factor that in you absolutely can but anything beyond tools and time will be calculated so with that said let's talk about the plan because hopefully I have a good one now, obviously, I won't be making this stone table with lava stone. I think we already knew that. <laughs> but I'm going to try very hard to give it the same look or as close to it as I possibly can. I want to build this with cement. I mean, I would love to use white cement, but it's just really hard to get in Canada with short turnaround time. But there is always a way to lighten cement. So we are going to go a DIY route and use some titanium dioxide. 
I think. I know the chemistry. So the next thing I need to think about is how am I going to make that round shape? We will need a mold of some sort. And I'm kind of thinking maybe one of those exercise, you know, those like bouncy exercise balls. It might just be the thing we need to do it. I'm gonna figure out how is that mold going to sit up? That is the thing I need to solve, but I will solve that by tomorrow. Now, the weight of this is obviously going to be an issue. I mean, a big slab of cement is going to be very heavy and I don't want that. I would like to keep it around the same weight as the original table, somewhere in the 60 pound, which is a lot of weight. So I think we're going to need a garbage idea. Now really, I mean using garbage <laughs> to help us. What I'm thinking is if we put recycled garbage, something to take up space, when we are pouring the cement, it could reduce the weight. We're gonna use garbage, but I promise the project won't be garbage hopefully. And then for the legs, I'm thinking we could probably build this with wood and then maybe like cover it with a thin layer of cement. We will need to think of a way to protect the wood first because wood can be absorbent, but I will look into that. I definitely have some more thinking to do on this, but like, let's give this a try. I mean, why not? <laughs> so let's go get some materials and then we can get started on this DIY. All right. <laughs> Oh, top of the morning to your friends. It's a good day. You wanna know why it's a good day? This gal was able to track down some white cement this morning and it is feel vindicated. Every vendor, every place in Toronto was all out. And then I found one place who had one skid left and I am try happy. It's gonna save us a lot of time. Now, we are creating a giant bowl that's filled in and you would think to find a giant bowl to be a mold would be easy, but it's not. And I couldn't find the right bowl size for what we wanna do. So basically we are going to create our own. Like I mentioned, I was thinking of using a yoga ball. So as you can see, I have some materials here because we are going to be paper mashing the ball. We are going to be creating sealers that are going to help seal the mold in on top of that. We are gonna create barriers between the cement and the mold so that the wetness of the cement never really actually meets the mold itself. In this box, I have a pump. I also have an exercise ball. Let's blow this up and we will use the ball itself as our mold object. That way we don't have to ruin an exercise ball. Maybe I'll use it. Probably not. How to use this pump. To inflate, attach vinyl hose to blue nozzle. Check. How hard can this be? Two hours later. Two weeks later. Yoo We're stomping now! 75 years later. We have a ball! Now that we finally have this part done, I need to find something that's gonna hold this up. Like obviously this tape is not gonna be the thing to do it. Let's see if this bowl will work. Okay, great. So I think I'm gonna reorientate my room and that way I can kind of have this set up so that this can be lower and then we will begin the paper mash. That's no moon. <laughs> I actually decided to do a layer of paper towel too because paper towel really hardens nicely, gets really crispy. I don't 
feel like it's thick enough yet, but I do want to give this time to kind of dry up and then maybe in a couple hours I will do a few more layers. I'm very excited for tomorrow because tomorrow we get to actually dig into the ground to create almost kind of just like a shell that this will sit in. Also tomorrow I am going to be joined by my wonderful friend Deanna. She is someone who might be working with me behind the scenes a little bit more. My dear friend Holly who you guys I'm sure are all accustomed to seeing lately. She's going to become a professional tattoo artist. She's following her dreams and I say go for the gold so we won't be seeing holly uh all too much anymore but we will be seeing deanna hopefully <laughs> a lot more behind the scenes so make sure you give her a warm welcome in the comment section <sighs> i have a lot of paper mashing to do see you tomorrow good morning friends we have ball last night i made a game time decision around 8 30. <laughs> that it wasn't hard enough. I was worried that I hadn't gone enough layers. So what I did was I ended up adding this layer of burlap with drywall compound. So with the burlap, it just adds a little extra piece of security for us to make sure that this is gonna be good and solid. It's raining today because it's always raining uh, lately. I wanna make sure that it's protected, at least the exterior, so it doesn't decay on us as we pour the concrete in. So I am going to paint the exterior of this up with a porch and patio paint. This is an exterior paint, and then we're gonna deflate this balloon, and then we're gonna paint the inside, and then we will finally be able to do what we came here to do, which is make a cement tabletop. Rock on, friends, let's do it. It is a true fall day and it's going to rain. So we are going to set up a tent right here because, okay, as we all remember my crappy fire pit to which I did not get to the DIY of the crappy fire pit this year. I am now thinking the fire pit is a perfect place to actually create the kind of holding space for my giant bowl mold. Deanna and I are going to, that's Deanna. Just wave. We are gonna set up a tent so that our tabletop is nice and protected and uh, we're just gonna keep moving forward. I think that's all we can do. Whether or not we will not be defeated. Okay, so we just gotta get. What would this be for? created a very large popcorn bowl or we've created a really great mold. Now, obviously the lines are gonna come through because of the tape once we pour the cement, but these lines can definitely be sanded out. We're gonna Vaseline this bad boy up so that we have a releasing agent once we put the cement in and then at least it'll just like release nicely once the cement is dry. So let's lube it up, baby. From the ashes, we make a tabletop, <laughs> literally. <laughs> we are good to go. We have our white cement. We have our dome, which is currently filled with, well, we're gonna have to be careful with the leaves. We will remove those leaves. Let's cut it open, shall we? Okay, a few things I've learned through this process. One, no more cement projects. <laughs> Two, although the garbage, the styrofoam was a great idea at the bottom, once we got to the top, there just wasn't enough weight to keep it down and I was too worried it was gonna float to the top as soon as I walk away from it. So we kind of forego 
the styrofoam at the top, but at least we do have some of that weight distribution at the bottom. Any pounds we can take away from this tabletop, the better. So all is well, but we kind of just uh, came to the conclusion that it was much easier to mix it in a bucket than to go in the wheelbarrow because it was just like, I was trying to be methodical about the pours, but eventually you just kind of have to work at a, a quick pace that you're just like, screw it, we're going bucket method. <laughs> and we can at least control how much we were making. So the plan is working other than the wind and the amount of leaves in my backyard. I just wanted to leave my cauldron alone. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to like clear some of the bigger piles of leaves around here and then we can walk away and hope that nothing lands on the top. Let's hope for the best. Ah, it just started raining. Ah, okay, we have the legs to now worry about now that the tabletop is done. The length of the tabletop is 28 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two pieces from my two by eight that I currently have with me. We are gonna cut two 28 inch pieces and then basically we're gonna crisscross them. And then the idea is that we will create some pieces that are gonna sit on top of our legs, but I'm gonna wait till tomorrow once we know what we're dealing with with the tabletop first. In the meantime, while we wait, let's get our legs cut and that's it, let's get our legs cut. <laughs> okay, get my life. have a base and we have a drying tabletop. I'm kind of worried about the cure time for the cement, but I am praying to the DIY gods that uh, overnight this will dry up. We will have a nice half moon shaped tabletop tomorrow. I don't want to start on creating the pieces that are going to actually hold the tabletop until I have the shape of the table first. We're kind of sitting ducks at this point, so I think uh, it's time to call it a day. So I'll see you tomorrow, my friends. Good morning, friends. It is such a beautiful day. Can you feel that sun just blaring into my face? I feel rejuvenated and it's so warm today, which bothers me so much because I have some bad news. When it comes to cement, there is a point in temperature where cracking can begin. And that's normally 40 degrees Fahrenheit or around four degrees Celsius. It's been going down to about eight normally. I thought we'd be fine. We were not. This is what we're looking at. As you can see, we have some cracking along the top. It's so unfortunate. However, I'm wondering what does it look like underneath? If the cracking is just on the top, I'm thinking I'll mix up a little bit. We'll fill in the cracks today and then we should be okay. We'll let that cure. However, um, if the cracking is all throughout, I'm kind of considering redoing the pour. Maybe we'll figure out a way to do it inside. Let's get this tabletop inside. Let's take off the mold and then let's see what we're dealing with because this is basically going to dictate our direction today. Highs and lows, my friends, highs and lows. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think we could salvage this. Good news, friends. She looks good underneath. Well, 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 Mr. Coffee Table. We meet again. <laughs> You're a little scary sometimes. You know that. We are look, finally looking at it. We are finally seeing what's underneath. It's actually in much better condition than I was expecting. I mean, all of these cracks are very surface level. Thank goodness, because that means that they are fixable. What we need to do at this point is I'm gonna flip this piece over and then we just need to create some kind of template of the hemisphere so that I can move forward with the legs and then we also need to fill in the cracks. So. Bye, George, let's get going. I was sure that it'll be easier to clear you from my mind. Chug away dusty corners till we're filled with fatal bombs. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The situation got upset when I stepped on a memory thorn. I did it to my shell.
distracting, burning tires to move on. Before I can like make this look like this to some level and degree, I need to fit this up, make sure we are good to go. We did make this out of wood and the good thing about wood is that wood is always fixable and it is always kind of moldable in a way. So I'm not worried. Okay, friends, some updates. Ooh, gosh, it's so bright today. I just don't know what to do with myself. The tabletop is off the base. The good news is, is that it does stand up quite nicely. Um, it does remove all the ickiness. The bad news is, is that cement does not adhere to cement. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't actually like mold together in any way. It would just sit on top and that's not what we want. So I am going to have to use like adhesive to fill in the gaps to make sure that that uh, crack doesn't crack again. And then we can kind of fix up anything. But what I'm gonna do in the meantime, before we do that, is I'm actually going to router the sides of the table legs so that it's nice and rounded in the original. It very much looks like a nice bulbous shape from the leg. I do wanna try my hardest to make that look. So I'm gonna use my router with a proper bit and uh, then we'll get this tabletop on. So there's so many steps to do, but we're gonna do them all. So let's get going, woo! Okay friends, so what I have here is some no-nail glue. I've already done one, but I'm gonna do three more with you. Basically, I'm just gluing the edges just so that this tabletop does not move a muscle once we are done. I also have a hole here that I now need to go in with a hammer drill and a proper drill bit that's made for drilling into brick and or concrete or cement. What I'll do is I'll make a small incision <laughs> into the cement and then I'm gonna use this concrete screw to anchor in from the side of the leg into the bowl, basically. It just gives a little extra insurance that this is not going anywhere. And then tomorrow I can sand everything down and seal it. Very exciting, let's do it. We are about to embark on an idea that could fail horribly. Okay. Epoxy and concrete. <laughs> We're gonna mix it together and hopefully create a thin layer that we can fill all those little gaps, all the cracks, all the holes, and not have to do a completely new cement pour. Is this a good idea? We don't know, but we're about to find out. the end of day. Although this looks very weird right now, this is kind of one of those moments of a trust the process because I feel like she's gonna work. All of this is gonna get sanded. I did end up just sprinkling some concrete on top, even if it can just like whiten it a little bit. Yay, <laughs> I guess. I did do something very stupid and I don't know why I didn't think of this, I just didn't. I should have taped off any of the edges that had cracks so that when I do the epoxy pour that it doesn't fall through. I think I was just caught up in the moment of like, wait, let's epoxy. So I'm gonna let this set up a little bit and then later on tonight, I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more and then tape this off and then pour the epoxy in. The bowl itself is a little wonky, but with some sanding tomorrow, I think she's gonna be good. It's a DIY experimental project and I love it. So anyways, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi friends.
friends. Good morning. Who else is working on something creative this morning? I, myself, am finishing a DIY project for a video. It just looks like crap right now. Now you guys are all gonna be know why you saw a giant dome in my fire pit yesterday. Good morning, DIY friends. We got the tabletop. She's outside right now. Um, I've set up kind of a little workstation. The epoxy isn't fully dry because last night around 10.30, I did a secondary epoxy pour. Like I said, I was gonna do, I was gonna add tape on the sides and then do some pours into some of the cracks that I forgot to tape off. So I think some time outside is gonna be good for our dear Mr. Tabletop. This morning, uh, during something I do on my Patreon, we do something called Mess Maker Morning and it's just we take one hour of our time to be creative and spend time with each other and do fun trivia questions. They're a blast. If you want to find out more about that, my Patreon is linked in my description box. Go check it out. Go be creative with us. But during this month's Mess Maker Morning, I was able to prime the legs. And uh, now what I can do is I have this drywall compound and I'm going to apply it all over the legs. I just want to give it kind of like a stone texture. Then we're going to sand this entire table and then we are gonna make it one cohesive color. So it actually looks like it's all working in the same stone family. It's gonna get real messy today. <laughs> okay. except the wabi-sabi about it. The cracks obviously are not ideal. There was a point where I thought maybe I'll just paint over the stone so that it looks like one unified color. You can't see any of the cracks. But then everything that we've gone through to get the white cement, to create this shape, to do all, and all the sanding, um, it would just be for nothing. So I think we're just going to accept it you know but the legs do still need some work i did get two colors i've only gotten little tester pots one they're super affordable but two when i was doing my bedroom sponge technique i kind of realized that there was a certain way or at a certain point that it actually did look like a cement wall and i was like i'm gonna remember this one day and that one day came sooner than i thought because i think if we use these two colors and we really just sponge them up nicely i think we could create something that looks a lot like the stone top so the two colors that i ended up getting is gray view and the second color i got was silver ash which is much lighter really just kind of emulates the the off white of the table i'm never going to get it perfect but i really think i got close so let's start kind of sponge techniquing the uh the legs and we'll we'll see what they look like have it friends the Monty Lava stone coffee table a duped and now beautifully displayed in my living room it's certainly not exactly the same for obvious wabi-sabi reasons but I like to think I made the project my own and gave it a DIY Danny twist I feel like I learned so much and I got to dabble in so many different kinds of elements that really made this a well-rounded DIY project which I think is a win in my books but in the spirit of this series let's talk the real cost as a reminder the West Elm version was a high-end value of $899. Now with taxes and shipping costs, it was going to be a total of $1,387 for me. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials I used, minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $399.69. That means I saved a total of $987.95 by making it myself. 
Honestly, I think that is a thumbs up right there. This is a great project being the first time that I've ever done something like this. There are learnings and there are things that I would do differently. So let's talk about them. First things first, I would definitely create this in the summer, not the fall. The weather was working against us. Obviously the cold weather really dropped in the evening and it caused this wabi-sabi cracking to happen, which was not ideal. It would have been nice if this didn't happen, but say la vie, if I had done this in the summer, I think that problem would go away. The second thing I would do differently is the weight. So right now this thing probably weighs about 80 pounds, which is ridiculously heavy. I would have loved to have found a way to create a lighter version of this, either adding more garbage or maybe doing a version that you could hollow out the middle to make it lighter. But I'm curious to know how would you guys create this project to make it lighter? We can brainstorm it together. And then looking at the original design, it actually had a flatter bottom than I had remembered once I looked back at it. So I definitely leaned into a more rounder shape. I think I could have changed the mold shape to be a little bit easier to pour, having a flatter bottom, and then found a way to make the sides a little bit differently. It did make my table a little bit smaller than the original, but that's okay. I actually think that the size is pretty good for my living room. And in total, I would say this took me about four days. I mean, I'm trying to think about the, the amount of downtime in between things because there was so much wait time to let things dry. But of course, if you were doing like a weekend project, I think this would take you maybe two weekends, which isn't really that bad in retrospect respect. But of course, you all should let me know what did you think of this table? Is this something that you would create in your home? I would love to brainstorm and hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Of course, sending a big thank you to my patrons, my DIY family. If you want to check out my Patreon and become a part of an amazing DIY community, I've linked it down below. And although this table is far more wabi-sabi than the original, I still think this is a slap the table good project. <laughs> of course, stay positive. Positive, stay creative and keep on DIYing. Bye bye.